Hey guys, Henning and Morten from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at the best 3D CG software that you can get for free. So this is going to be targeted towards students or maybe people who don't really who can't afford the software, which let's be honest is most of us, because if you not if you need to get all these packages, it's it's going to be quite expensive. So we've compiled a list of software that's free, non-commercial, that is good for you to pick up and uh, actually software that we, we, we would recommend. Yeah, these are a lot of these are industry standard software which have free versions of them. The first one here is all of the Autodesk tools. <laughs> now, yeah. Autodesk, they provide all the tools for free if you're a student. Mm. As a little caveat here, we are not sure if this includes if you are self-taught. So if you're if you're uh, at your own in your own room back home and you want to learn, for instance, through some Max or Maya, it might be worth trying it out. Yeah. But we uh, we don't actually know. You might it's... have to be connected to a school. Yeah. We're not entirely sure. So give it a try at least. But there are many more things on the list yes. which uh, you can actually download. And, and if you are with. in a school and you only have uh, you only have Maya at school, now you can definitely get Maya for home as well because mm -hmm. now you are. You are tied to an accredited institution. This is something, I mean, we did a lot. So, yeah. you know, we would just like have a student version at home. And then whenever we would be at school, work, send it back home. And then we had a version we could work on there. The One of the restrictions, I guess, with the student version that uh, you have to be aware of, obviously, like with any of these educational and, and student versions, you can't use it for commercial purposes. So specifically for Maya, if you have a student version and you've made a file there and you open it in a regular uh, version of Maya, it is going to have a pop-up that says this is made in a student version. So uh, that's really bad if you want to work commercially and you <laughs> use the student version and you send it off and they're going to be like, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, don't do not do illegal stuff. So the next one here is SketchUp, which we found out was formerly called Google SketchUp. We were going a little crazy, like, wait, isn't that Google SketchUp? <laughs> yeah. But they renamed it at some point. So SketchUp is an excellent piece of software typically used for making architectural things. And, you know, you can measure stuff out and it's really good beginner software that you can try out and, and see if 3D is actually for you. I think I think you're right there, because if you start with one of the more hardcore ones like Maya or Blender, you, you pretty much have to do everything from scratch. Like if you want to model a house, you start with a cube and you just it's essentially like you start with a ball of clay. Yeah. But if you use SketchUp, that's like oh, the planks are pre-made. Yeah. You put in a kitchen here, you put in a wall. So it's a lot easier to get started with. And a lot of people had their first uh, had SketchUp as their first software. The cool thing that. about SketchUp as well that it actually supports a multitude of render engines. So if you wanted to take it further with SketchUp and you wanted to render something, you could get other render engines in there. Um, also paid render engines, but then maybe you weren't aren't using SketchUp. I don't know. <laughs> so next one, super powerful. Uh, we always get flack for talking about Blender for some reason. <laughs> I guess we've made so much fun of it, but uh, we do. <laughs> It's Blender. <laughs> Rightfully so. So Blender, awesome piece of software. It can do everything, actually. So you can just ignore the rest of the list because yeah. <laughs> Blender can actually do all the things we're about to talk about later <laughs> in this video as well. Now, Blender is, is an awesome tool because it's such a, you know, it's just a suite of all the tools that you'll ever need for 3D, whether it's modeling, texturing, compositing, uh, editing, effects, animation, anima whatever, you, know, whatever you want to do. That's why it's so powerful. But it can also be a little bit intimidating when you jump into a software where there is so much that you need to learn where something like SketchUp might be a good alternative if you just wanna, you wanna, you wanna try out 3D just to figure out if it's for you. Yeah, while well, people are saying that, oh, Blender is easy to learn, it really isn't easy to learn. Like if you're a pure beginner, it's just as hard to learn Blender as it is to learn 3 Studio Max. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a super hardcore software, but it's also really awesome. Like this, you can use Blender for commercial work, like I don't know, professional level work. This is not like a beginner software where you graduate from Blender and then you go into Maya afterwards because it's more powerful. They're just different. Yeah. So the difference there being, like we've talked about before, Blender, not so much an industry standard tool as Maya or 3D Studio Max, but you can definitely use it for commercial purposes. You can make money with Blender. You can do freelance with Blender. Anything you want to do, basically, in 3D, you can do in Blender. Yeah, it's completely open source and it will never be sold. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so a lot of people who go from, uh, I know people who go from VFX to doing their own freelance, they switch to Blender because uh, it's just, it, they save three, four thousand dollars a year on it. So it's uh, it's totally up there in terms of quality for what yeah. you can do. Like if I had to, you know, do uh, VFX or, or commercials professionally now, I would probably switch over to Blender just mm -hmm. because the cost of Maya just isn't, isn't worth it. No. 
Then we have Cinema 4D. Also, they have like Cinema 4D is also paid paid software, but uh, there is free versions of it, like this free educational license. So, as far as we can tell, you know, this just lets you test out everything Cinema 4D has to offer. There might be restrictions on it. Don't really know. But the nice thing about Cinema 4D is that it gives you an amazing suite of tools if you want to get into specifically motion graphics. It, you know, it's still like a super powerful 3D tool as well for a bunch of things, but the procedural modeling and the procedural things you can do with uh, the effects in, in Cinema 4D is like, I don't really think any other software compares. No, if you want to do motion graphics, then you do Cinema 4D. Then you, you do Cinema 4D and After Effects probably, and then you have a really winning combo. Yeah. And now on to the hardcore version of that, I would say, <laughs> is uh, Houdini. So Houdini also has their, they have a, a, an apprenticeship license, I guess, where the apprenticeship license, as far as we could see, was completely free. And the restrictions on it were actually quite minor. There's some watermarks like you would expect on free software and you can't render out as as, as high a resolution as you would with a normal license. But, you know, on the upside, it's completely free. Yeah, it's a little watermark when you're like in the interface, but mm. you know, it's, you're getting Houdini for free. Yeah. Houdini might be the most powerful software in like for 3D today. It's really taken industry by storm. Well, it's been bit for like 20 years, but <laughs> yeah. it's insanely powerful. And if you know Houdini well, you're guaranteed a job. The crazy thing about Houdini now is that, you know, they keep pushing out crazier and crazier updates. A couple of years ago, massive updates to both the rigging tools, the modeling tools. So it's actually super solid for that as well. Yeah. And obviously, you know, the effects speak for themselves. Basically, all effects you see on screen uh, in basically any film nowadays, it's probably made with, uh, with Houdini. Yeah, it's probably 100% <laughs> Houdini. Some <laughs> yeah. studios have local tools, but it's, it's all Houdini. Even games nowadays use Houdini, actually. Mm -hmm. I remember, I think it was on, um, uh, what's that, Nathan Drake, Uncharted, mm -hmm. the latest Uncharted and the one with the little girl and the man and then there's like <laughs> and you're like shoot pew oh that one <laughs> joel and whatever it's you know last of us that's the that's one, the one. <laughs> <laughs> sorry you had to go through that guys <laughs> i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure they used houdini on that i might be lying but i'm pretty sure sounds like, it sounds like an important fact it may or may not be true so definitely double check that before you tell anyone about it <laughs> <laughs> and next up we've got uh sculptress which was acquired by Pixelogic, I don't know, how many years ago many was that? Many years ago. Many yeah, years ago. some crazy guy from maybe Sweden, I think. Uh, Dr. Petter. <laughs> made Sculptress, awesome sculpting software. It's completely free, and I think it's, it's, an, it's a good way of getting people into sculpting, and it's a really good way to get people into ZBrush from Pixelogic's side, which is obviously, I think, why they bought it. Yeah. And uh, hasn't developed it since. Yeah, I think there was a clear reason. They saw, they <laughs> saw Sculptress as a threat, so they bought it, and they kind of close it down but i mean like more than saying here it's a it's an excellent sculpting tool like i've tried pretty much all the sculpting tools out there and the best one is zbrush no doubt mm -hmm. but the second best one i would say is sculptress yeah like when I, i've been teaching a lot of sculpting to to kids and teenagers and like from 80 year olds to like 15 16 years old and you can't show them zbrush it's too intimidating like there is just no way you could show an 80 year old zbrush <laughs> But you can show an eight-year-old sculptress. Because yeah. that's just like, you can show a Minecraft. Why can't you show an eight-year-old girl sculptress? Yeah. And you totally can. You just give them a cheap tablet. You give them sculptress. And you can make some pretty cool stuff with it. Like, it, it, it is not going to be proper professional level work. Because it, it is quite limiting. Performance is really suffering. But if you, if you have somebody who, like a son or a daughter, and they're really into art, let them try out sculptress. Yeah. It's a really, I think it's the perfect sort of gateway drug yeah. <laughs> in, in the sculpting. <laughs> it really is. Um, so, you know, it works a little bit differently than ZBrush, but it's, it's definitely the best way to get started, I think. Then we have everyone's favorite hot new tools. Substance by Adobe. By Adobe. Oh, <laughs> we lost half of years from this. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, don't, don't say anything about Adobe. Don't say anything. <laughs> um, so as far as we could see, we were actually just searching for Substance Painter, but... As far as we can see, it looks like all the Substance applications are free for students and teachers. And I don't think you have to be connected to a school because it, it says specifically cannot be used on the school's computers. Yeah, that would kind of defeat the purpose. <laughs> but maybe there is still something like you have to be at a school, like you have to be attending a school to get a license. I'm not entirely sure, but at least, you know, it's, it's worth giving this a shot because 
this is like the industry t- standard tool when it comes to texturing now. Yeah, it really it really makes sense that they have this. Also because as we're getting to in next one is uh, there are the competitors also have free versions. Yeah. So if you if you don't have a free version of your tool <laughs> and the competitor does, guess who's gonna yeah get exactly. the customers like seriously all all software should just have a free ver- some free version of their software so that people can test it out. Yeah. You know, before they commit to buying, you're not you're not buying Cinema 4D, which is three and a half thousand dollars no. as your first tool. Like you, you, there is just no way in hell you're doing that. You tried the free version, and you don't even try trial because they might be from a week to a month. <laughs> yeah. like, that is no not enough time. Or just to slam Adobe. Actually, they have a they have a seven day seven trial day for trial. Photoshop, which I think is pathetic. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Substance, you know, so Substance Painter for texturing. So you know, you can texture your model, give it color, that kind of stuff. Then they have Substance Designer as well, where you can author materials, make crazy procedural materials that you can then plug into Substance Painter or other 3D software. Yeah, if you're if you're a beginner and you're looking for what texture and tool you should use, you should definitely look into Painter. Yeah, like it is really one of the best painting tools out there today. It's the for me, it's the simplest tool. It's the one that makes the most sense, and personally, I just prefer it. It's my preferred texture tool. Yeah. Same. It's uh, it's really really intuitive to use. Now for the hardcore one, which is Mari. So Mari again is also an industry standard texturing tool, but mostly for VFX, but mostly for characters in VFX. Yeah. Uh, when you come to something like when you do hard surface or if you do games, then most of that stuff is done with a combination of designer and painter nowadays. Yeah. But um, Mari is by far the most powerful one. So if you need a really powerful texturing solution where you do 100 UDIMs for a character or something like that, then Mari is the way to go. Yeah, and if you don't know what Morton just mentioned now with what a UDIM is, then you don't need Mari. Yeah, <laughs> probably not. Then <laughs> think a painter. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly hardcore and it's really awesome. But it's like if you're a beginner to 3D, you don't, you don't look into Mari. It's it is really like you. You start with Painter, and you can also you never use Mari. Totally fine. Yeah. Painter is really powerful. But if you really need power, like if you're doing like high level commercials, or if you're doing, if you need some very specific things, Mari is an excellent tool. Yeah, I've been sitting in half my career in Mari. Like I was, I was sitting in Mari day in and day out, and it's a really, really excellent tool. The cool thing about uh, Mari here is that it has a non-commercial version. So this is not a trial at all, or really an educational version. This is just a it's not a commercial one. So there are some restrictions here, like you can see here, like uh, resolution size is limited to uh, 4K. Uh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you have only some limited formats. Oh no, you yeah. have all of them. You have PNG, EXR, PSD, everything you need. You don't have access to Python scripting and you can only have six UDIMs as well, which uh, is a bit annoying if you want more high level stuff, but six UDIMs 4K is plenty for, for basically everything you will ever need yeah six times more than painter yeah (laughs) (laughs) so uh you know if you're looking to get into vfx and you want to do texturing for that then mari a combination of mari and painter is probably good actually yeah i would say i would say if you're a student and you want to get into really into texturing you should definitely you should definitely know mari yeah if you go to vfx studio and you you only know how to use uh, painter it's not great you want you know all of them and to another of their non-commercial software, we have a compositing software, which is Nuke. So, yeah, like Nuke is, I think, just the industry standard everywhere, yeah. pretty much. For um, compositing, there's nothing else really used. You know, this is the most powerful and it can do everything you need a compositor to do. Uh, sure, you can do some compositing things in, in After Effects and stuff, but most studios nowadays will use, will use Nuke. Yeah. Um, that integration with Nuke and I guess Nuke Studio, where you can do things sent back and forth. You can even you can render in Nuke nowadays as well. You can uh, get a V-Ray for Nuke. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. But uh, a non-commercial version here as well, which I think is limited to like, yeah. Yeah, full HD. Full HD. There are some other limitations. The biggest limitation is by far that it is it is full HD. So if you want to do anything higher than that, you can't. I've been doing, when I was in production, I used Nuke a lot for texturing. Uh, you obviously can't do that here because now you have a limited of 1K to export. Yeah. But uh, I feel like, didn't the resolution restriction, didn't it used to be 720p? Mm, I don't think so. Okay. I think it was. I think it was only right, okay. all that. But regardless, like there is, a, there is a clear, there's a clear resolution restriction. But this is great if you want to work in the effects and and you want to uh, 
you know you want to get you want to learn the tool so that you're ready for, for yeah. it whenever you get in now it doesn't support plugins you can't use like crazy lens flare yeah. plugins and stuff but honestly you know that's a that's icing on the cake if you know how to use it you know how to use the masks and you know how to invert stuff i, I don't know not, not about <laughs> you know just merge stuff add it together <laughs> roto some things or something then you're good and you also can't be sneaky so you can't uh, you can't have a team which works in non-commercial and mm. they then render it just in a commercial like these are files are encrypted so you can't just copy paste them. <laughs> yeah when you try to copy a file not that i've ever tried but <laughs> if you try to copy because uh, nuke files are pretty cool that they're just they're just text files so you can just copy and paste them between software if you try to do one from a non-commercial to a commercial it'll just not work yeah exactly <laughs> not that i've tried <laughs> I've, so. I've totally tried that because <laughs> i had both next to it because we we had three versions of nuke don't tell <laughs> don't tell them that <laughs> um but if you are looking for like a full suite that is also free we would recommend that Na- natron 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 yeah yeah, like natron, that. yeah this is a fully this is open source this is a blender for uh, for compositing uh, it's it's essentially a clone of nuke if you if you know how to use nuke the hotkeys are the same mm. the interface is the same everything is the same it yeah it's like not nuke. even like yeah they, they didn't even try to hide it no it's shamelessly <laughs> nuke <laughs> And it's a good, it is, and therefore it's a good software, you know? Yeah. It, has, it has pretty much everything you know and love from Nuke, but it's 100% free. Yeah. I don't know how they make money, and how, I don't know how they, how they stay afloat, but it's a crazy software, and it does everything you need it to for a uh, compositing solution. I don't know how they're not getting sued, because it's, you know, it's pretty, pretty similar. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe that's like a little off, so maybe that's uh, why. Maybe, yeah. maybe they did a different shade of gray or something. But at least this is a really good tool. I've been using this a little bit as well. Yeah. I'm getting more into it now as well because for the work I'm doing, it's like Nuke is far overkill. Like clearly Nuke is way more feature rich than Natron. But if, if, do, you, do you need all that? Mm. Probably not. For most compositing things, no. Yeah. Unless you're in, in a big effects VFX production yeah, exactly so you can save a lot of money by doing that then we have fusion which uh, we had to search for this a little bit actually but um so fusion is also a compositing solution but fusion itself fusion studio is a paid software yes. but there's a free version of fusion that ships with davinci so davinci resolve so if you download davinci uh the davinci resolve which is completely free then you get a free copy of uh, fusion as well so also com- like very feature rich uh, compositing software some t- small differences it seems like between the regular free fusion and then fusion studio yeah i used to use fusion uh, professionally like 12 10 years ago something like that where we worked on animated series and we used fusion for all the compositing mm. like fusion is fusion is is a really powerful uh, tool and in some ways it's, it's way better than nuke as well but uh, it's not in industry standard uh, there were, it felt like there was like a moment where it was going to be used going to be nuke or fusion as a standard but it's 100 percent nuke today yeah but this is also a really good tool because unlike natron this is not like an open source project developed out of the love this is a commercial tool and where I'm guessing that they want to tie you into the black magic ecosystem. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's Fusion is super powerful and can do like most of your compositing needs can be met with the software. So definitely, definitely check it out. Yeah, and if you want Fusion Studio as well, it's also significantly cheaper than than the full version of Nuke as mm. well. Just just ridiculously expensive. <laughs> yeah, I think the full version is like three hundred dollars. Yeah, something so. like that. Then, as some honorable mentions, which isn't 3D software, we have Krita, I, Krita, I guess, um, which is a painting painting solution. So, for those you know who who can't afford Photoshop, this might be a, a good alternative for you to look into. I don't really know much about Krita, but no. we've heard some good things about yeah, it. Yeah, I've heard very good things about it. And to be clear, this is not a, a texture painting. This is a digital painting. Yeah, yeah. So definitely, you know, if you're interested in illustration and digital painting, check out Krita. But also check out the best software on the planet for this, which is GIMP. <laughs> yeah. This is a this is pretty, pretty decent if you just want to do a photo manipulation and you don't want Photoshop. Yeah, so this this can serve as a, a replacement for for Photoshop. Yeah, I think does it open Photoshop files as well? I think so. I think it opens PCs files. It's it's a it's a pretty crazy software. Personally, I don't like the look of it, but you know 
I'm just a very shallow person when it comes to <laughs> software. <laughs> exactly. Like um, if, if you want to do what people use it a lot for is, uh, let's say you just want, you want to add some text to something or just yeah. some light editing, it might just be easier just to fire up GIMP than it is to do full on Photoshop. And the fact that you know you don't have to spend money on it. The cool another cool thing is that it also for uh, VFX production it actually runs on Linux, mm. unlike Photoshop. So. Uh, well, at least I don't think Photoshop, because we never know. No, Photoshop so, like, some project doesn't. But yeah, so GIMP, totally free, and you can do painting, you can do um, photo editing, whatever you want to do in GIMP. Right? So definitely check that out as well. I think that about that concludes our list of amazing free CG 3D software. That's a terrible title. <laughs> yeah, if we were to make like a little ranking of this, I would probably say that like Blender would probably be on a top here, because yeah. it's just... It's fully free, no like, limitations. With the features you get and how how free it is, yeah. um, it's pretty much unrivaled. I think. Yeah, I would also I would also highly highly recommend looking into Houdini as well. Yeah, and then but then if you are a pure beginner, both of those are way too hardcore and start with SketchUp. Yeah, and again, if you want to get into sculpting and you know maybe if you have kids or you're just a beginner, uh, Sculptus is, is fantastic. Yeah. to get started with. So yeah, I guess that concludes this this video. If you want to see more of these sort of software breakdowns, where we talk about software that's good to use for certain scenarios, um, please let us know. Leave a comment, uh, like the video, subscribe. Make sure to turn on notifications so you can notify it every time we put out a new video. And thank you so much for watching. Thanks, guys.